everybody, and welcome to the Quantum Alignment Show. We'll just take a moment to align ourselves in the most quantum way possible. And uh, honestly, the easiest way to do that is to just simply breathe. I don't think we breathe well or breathe enough in our culture. We are always seemingly out of breath or breathless. And I know that uh, as a Texan, manifesting generator who moves fast. I think I forget to breathe sometimes. So we'll start with taking a breath, which will be for me, a good reminder to speak slowly. If you have any questions or comments along the way, please post your comments in chat. If you are watching us live on Facebook, welcome. And you can post your comments below. We'll be following along. Uh, Today, we're gonna be talking about faith. Learning how to have faith by design. And we're going to be talking about why faith and knowing how to cultivate faith is so important. It's a key tool to activating your full creative capacity. You cannot create if you can't take leaps of faith. I mean, you can create, don't get me wrong, you can create if you're taking leaps, not if you're not taking leaps of faith. But what you create will be minimal. And what you create will be purely within the confines of your human story, which means you won't be able to create anything that's bigger than your sheer effort, which is the perfect prescription for burning yourself out. It's the perfect prescription for a mediocre reality versus the expanded potential of what's available to you. We're going to talk about what you need to do to fully activate your faith, your support, your uh, your creativity, your quantum consciousness, and your ability to create beyond what you think is possible. Not only because that's important for you, it's also important for the world. When we limit ourselves to only letting the physical reality be our the confines from within which we create, when we only let ourselves create what we think is possible, or when we pay attention to the empirical measurement of what's happened before and we think if it hasn't happened in the past, it can't happen in the future, then we stop ourselves from experiencing synchronicity, harmony, magic in the creative power and the creative process of what we're creating into the future or pushing into the future. Bottom line is you got to remember how to dream. You got to remember how to create. That's really what I'm trying to say. So let's get started today and talking about faith and faith by design. I also just want you to know this is simple. It's not always easy, but what we're going to talk about is actually simple. The goal for today is to at least begin to set us up to understand that faith or is your ability to trust the universe or if you want to call it God, if you want to call it source, if you want to call it spirit, some of you will want to call it the quantum field, whatever word you want to insert there. The goal is to move yourself to a place of understanding of of being in trust that you are supported in having all the resources you need to fulfill your human story. My end goal for you guys, and I know I've, I've shared this with you a couple of times along the way, but uh, my end goal for you is for you to be able to say this statement out loud and to really feel it and to mean it. And the statement goes like this. I am a perfect expression of the divine. I am a powerful and unlimited creator. I am fully supported in the complete experience and fulfillment of my life path and purpose. Being supported is my birthright and my natural state. It is through the path of surrender, compassion, and service to the cosmic plan, the divine path, and to divine timing, that I am always in the right place, in the right time, with the right people, making the right choices to fulfill my destiny and the energy of source God, put in whatever words you want here, working through me to serve the world. I use all that I am to fully activate all that I am. I fully express my mastery my heart, my authentic self, my unique place of service, and my joy. I receive because I know that I am a precious child of the divine. I receive because I know that surrender is the path to power and service. I allow all the good that is my birthright 
I create purely for the sake of expressing the source of love that I am, I trust. I use the blessings of my infinite abundance to increase the abundance of others. I am love and loved. I'm infinite abundance in action. That's you, not me. Me, me too, but all of us. So um, my, my, I hope that you would, you find a, a, an opening of your heart and a recognition of yourself in this statement. And as I said, over the next couple of weeks, we'll be talking about different ways where you can create greater alignment in your life and your understanding of who you are in the world to support you in really living this statement out. We have to first start with a very important conversation about who you are. And this comes more from the the more esoteric, uh, I like to call this the pre-science information about human design. I call it pre-science because in the 19 years that I have been working with human design and studying human design and teaching human design, what I have learned is that many of the things in human design that we used to think were weird or strange or completely off the charts esoteric uh, and bizarro mundo are actually now scientifically valid. And some of the things that we talk about even today, 10 years ago, were not scientifically valid. And today they are. So I like to call this the pre-science of who you are with the understanding that someday soon, I suspect we will continue to cultivate a deeper understanding of this aspect of human design. For some of you, this may be a review. For many of you, this may not be a review. And it hopefully will give you a different spin or a different understanding on who you are and how you create. Your story, at least your story in this lifetime as the human that you are, begins at your conception. And in human design, conception actually happens eight hours prior to the time when your parents got together to actually make your body. At the moment of conception, your father's energy calls forth a a code of information. That code is in crystalline form. And when I say it's in crystalline form, you may not actually find it as a tangible material thing in the body, but there is a crystalline code that carries the energy of the story that you will be occupying in this lifetime. So who you are in this lifetime, you're living in a story. You're occupying a story. And the code for the story of who you are in this lifetime, including the code for your physical body, your family, the people in your life who you are destined to run into, the experiences that you have that are more part of your destined path rather than your creative path, all of that is contained within this crystalline code called the design crystal. If you are familiar with the work of Dr. Rupert Sheldrake and morphogenetic fields, I believe that in the in the notion of looking at the, looking at this from a pre-science perspective, that this is the crystalline code that carries the morphogenetic field, the subtle body template, or the energy template of who you are going to grow into and become as you move from conception to birth. The design crystal manifests your life story and your life purpose, as I said, and it also holds the code, the morphogenetic code, for your physical body. So it's the design crystal that actually selects which sperm fertilizes your mother's egg. And I believe that the design crystal uh, actually orchestrates the morphogenetic field or the, the energy template of how your body develops while you are going from being an embryo to a full grown human baby. If you have ever studied embryology or taken embryology in college, or if that's your thing, you'll know that embryologists don't really know how we go from being uh, cells that are undifferentiated to being differentiated cells as we grow and develop in utero. Rupert Sheldrake and many other um, more evolutionary quantum biologists believe that there's an energetic template in place that actually dictates how the cells differentiate in the process of growth from fertilization to birth. So it is quite possible in the pre-science phase of our understanding that this design crystal carries the morphogenetic template for how your body will develop in utero. The design crystal is bundled together. And by the way, the design crystal is called forth out of the earth. It's actually the story you're living belongs to the earth or 
Ra used to say, the earth program. So the story that you're occupying is an earth story. That design crystal is bundled together with a magnetic monopole. So the design crystal is called forth. That design crystal brings with it a magnetic monopole. The magnetic monopole is a magnet that only attracts. And up until very recently, scientists suspected that there was such a thing as the magnetic monopole. But until recently, I think in 2017, scientists have actually now discovered that there is such a thing as a magnetic monopole. Ra used to teach that a magnetic monopole is responsible for gravity. And there are a lot of scientists now that are beginning to suspect that that is perhaps indeed true. A magnetic monopole is a magnet that only attracts. Most magnets, regular magnets, have two poles. One that attract, one pole attracts, one pole repels. A magnetic monopole actually only attracts. That magnetic monopole, as your body matures and your energy system matures while you're in utero, that magnetic monopole actually takes up residency in the G center, which is part of the heart chakra. So in the heart of who you are, there exists a magnet, a magnet that only attracts. It attracts into your life experience things that help you fulfill the story of who you are. So again, these are all the sort of predestined sort of cosmic kismet events that happen in your life. It attracts also in your life, into your life, things that match your vibrational frequency. So you're not all doomed and faded. You don't live a completely 100% predestined life. You do have control over what you choose to create or attract into your life based on the quality of frequency of energy that you consciously cultivate. Many of us are creating without consciously cultivating that frequency. If you want to amp up your creative power and create a life that is more in alignment with what you genuinely want for yourself, you have to consciously work on creating a frequency of energy that calibrates that magnetic force in your heart, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. So the magnetic monopole takes place, takes its residency in the, in the G center. The design crystal takes residency in the Ajna center. And there is a third crystal called the personality crystal. That personality crystal, which I haven't talked about yet, at the about three months prior to your birth, a second crystalline matrix of information enters your energy field. That second crystalline matrix of information is called your personality crystal. The personality crystal carries the code for your soul purpose or your soul curriculum in this lifetime. You can't bring your entire soul energy with you into a human body because the human body is dense and tiny and it doesn't really have the capacity to create planets and universes the way your soul does when it's not living in a body. So when you come into a body and you occupy your life story, you're bringing an aspect or a curriculum with you from your soul. And that curriculum is coded into the personality crystal, which ultimately takes up residency in the head center. So the head center, the top triangle in the chart, carries the code for your soul curriculum. The Ajna center carries the code for your life story. And the G center carries the magnet that pulls everything into your life experience that you need to fulfill the intention that you created when you manifested into this human story that you're living. The thing that I want you just to focus on for today, because there's a lot more that we can talk about around this. This is is in and of itself an entire curriculum. The thing that I really want you to focus on today is that the pituitary gland, which is sometimes called the third eye, is the bridge that connects the soul curriculum information and the life story. And that Staying intuitively connected or keeping your pituitary gland healthy actually helps you align more effectively with your soul curriculum and your life purpose. In the next quantum alignment show that I'm going to do, we're going to come back to this topic specifically, and we're going to talk about your pituitary gland, your intuition, and looking at how your intuition works by design. Because we all we use our intuition and, and we're all hardwired to understand our intuition differently based on our design. 
And we're going to talk about being intuitive by design and why the pituitary gland is such a vital part of uh, connecting us not only with our life purpose and our and the cosmic realm, but also with our soul curriculum. Let's talk a little bit about the G center and why the G center is so important and why understanding the G center or the heart of who you are is vital to activating your faith. Remember that this G center contains within it the magnetic monopole that we can calibrate that magnetic monopole and that the G center has the function of serving as the center that gives you not only love and helps you understand and interpret love, but also is the center for the direction of your life and that the direction of your life is derived from the quantity and the quality of love you experience in the world. If we're going to look at the quantum purpose of the G center, we would say that the quantum purpose of the G center is to give direction to love, sustainability, leadership, release, empowerment, spirit, embodiment, natural order, compassion, and peace. That is derived from all of the themes of the different gates of the G center. And of course, the G center holds the magnetic resonance field of the magnetic monopole. So it calibrates the energies you hold in this G center, the the connection you have, the quality and the quantity of the love you carry in your G center actually calibrates the magnetic monopole. (laughs) <laughs> Let's just fix this right now. Pineal gland. So when we look at the mechanics of heart resonance or the mechanics of calibrating your heart and consequently calibrating the electromagnetic resonance field that contains the magnetic monopole, what we see is that your connection to your soul purpose or your soul curriculum in your ajna with your life purpose And the power of your imagination and your intuition and that bridge that unifies your soul purpose and your life purpose actually stimulates emotional energy, which in turn stimulates the heart. In other words, when we create from a place of self-love, power, self-expression, forgiveness, spirit, vitality, support and compassion, we calibrate the heart, we open the heart, literally. It's a measurable phenomenon. In fact, one of the things I would encourage you to do is to look at these eight voices here, the I love myself voice, the I decide, I choose coming from the seven, the I am voice coming from the one, the 13 that says, I tell my own story each and every day, I can redefine who I am, the 25, which says, I trust source, The 46, which says, I love my body. The two, which says, I allow myself to be supported and I am grateful. And the 15, which says, I share all of who I am. I share what I have. I come from a place of compassion. Simply using those words, those phrases, I love myself. I decide. I choose. I am. I tell my own story. I trust source. I love my body. I allow and I am grateful. I share. These statements Just uttering these statements change the frequency of energy that you carry in your heart. There's more to it. And as we move through this, not in this class, but in the next couple of classes, we'll talk a little bit more about how you can bring more energy to these statements to actually expand your heart energy field even more and calibrate that magnetic monopole to an even deeper degree to attract what you really want into your life and to use that energy consciously. But just for today, I want you to practice Thinking about these statements and how you can just simply use these statements in repetition when you're feeling down, when you're feeling blue, when you're feeling powerless, when you're feeling like things aren't going your way, stop and go through these statements. I love myself. I decide. I choose. I am. I tell my own story. I trust source. These these sentences actually crack your heart chakra or your heart energy open. Your inspirations, the thing that happen in your mind and your mind is simply that place where we connect with soul purpose and life purpose your inspirations calibrate your emotions which calibrate your heart and that heart then in turn stimulates or calibrates the magnetic resonance field or the monopole 
So your head and your ajna stimulate imagination and possibility, which then stimulates your emotional solar plexus, which carries a frequency of energy that's in alignment with the meaning you give your imaginative inspirations, which then aligns with your sense of self-worth and lovability to calibrate your magnetic monopole, to attract into your life things that are in alignment with the frequency of energy that you're holding, to attract into your physical world things for you to respond to with your root center, your sacral, or your spleen. This is, if you can memorize this, and as I said, over the next couple of lessons, I'm going to go through this with you so that you really get this. If you can get these five points and activate them in your life, meaning if you can use the power of your imagination to stimulate positive, excited, happy, aligned, joyful emotions, you will, without having to do anything else, stimulate your heart chakra and calibrate your monopole to attract things into your physical reality. And once you attract those things into your physical reality, you can then respond to them in the way that's right for you according to your human design type. It's really that simple. And actually the formula for creating is this simple. We wanna make it super complicated. We wanna add a whole bunch of work and willpower and sweat and tears to it, but it's really pretty simple. Use your imagination to think good thoughts, to create powerful emotions, to calibrate your heart and wait and see what shows up. But to do that, we have to have faith because many of us get very nervous just sitting around having happy thoughts and happy emotions without knowing what else to do with that. So let's talk a little bit about how do we begin the process of learning and cultivating faith, meaning trusting that does, uh, that emotional energy and that process of stimulating our heart energy is powerful enough to actually create in our reality the things we want. The first thing we have to do when we're talking about creating faith or, or cultivating faith is we have to look at where did we first learn about faith? We have to kind of look at what's come before to condition you around having faith or lack of faith. And to do that, we got to look at where did we learn faith in the first place? The very first place you learn faith is from your parents. If you think about how you arrived on this planet, you arrived on this planet as a tiny, helpless little creature who needed these beings, your parents, for everything, for food, for shelter, for safety, for warmth, for love, for neurological stimulation. Your parents, in the beginning of your life experience, may have seemed to you as if they were omnipresent. You cried, they showed up, right? And even as you got a little bit older, you know, how many of you felt like your parents were omnipresent? I don't know about you guys, but when I was in high school, I would try to sneak out my bedroom window quite a bit. And I swear to God, my dad was always at the bottom of my window waiting for me when I bolted out the window. He was super omnipresent. Your parents teach you about love and being unconditionally loving. If you go back to looking at the G Center, the G Center is the center for love and direction. The direction of our life is calibrated by the quantity and the quality of love that we experience. The more we know love, the more loved we are, the more loving we become, the more we cultivate a direction-giving, powerful, creative energy, and the more we can relax and trust and have faith. If you know you are lovable and valuable, then you don't question your worth when it comes to receiving. And you don't question your worth around creating. And you allow yourself to entertain the possibility of creating more than what you think you can do with just your human experience. Our parents are either empowering or sometimes, unfortunately, disempowering. They are encouraging. They model for us what faith looks like, and they model for us what alignment looks like. So I do invite you to explore when you think about how can you deepen your faith? How can you create a greater state of faith in your life beyond human design? Look at your experience with your parents. How did your parents model faith for you? How did your parents demonstrate to you the theme of support? What did you learn about feeling supported, trust, and alignment from your family? It's not always, sometimes this is a triggering dialogue. And I just want you to say, sometimes when I go through this with my students and my clients, you know, this can bring up a lot of stuff. The purpose is not to bring up stuff to be triggered or to blame our parents. It's to begin to unravel where maybe we need to relearn a different definition of how to be faithful in our creative process and how we live in the world. 
Faith happens when we trust source, when we can stand in our value and our lovability with the phrase, I am worthy. We can suspend the judgment of the mind, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. We learn to trust our intuition, which will be our next class. And when we understand the mechanics of co-creating with the divine. Let's look at where does faith live in the human design chart. Now, I'm going to do that thing that I do sometimes that sometimes makes people panic. So let's all stop (laughs) and take a breath and recognize that as I talk about the chart, actually, I want to get out of here for just a second because I want you guys to know how serious I am about this, right? When I start talking about the chart, which I'm going to start doing in a minute, I'm looking at the chart as a template for the human experience. I'm talking about the chart as the mechanics of the human journey that you're experiencing right now. What that means is that you experience every part of the chart. You all have all of the chart. Okay. You don't, even the things that are open or white in your chart, you have those things in your chart. Openness means you have variability in how you experience the energy. You're getting that energy in a variety of different ways in the world outside of yourself. Definition means it's fixed and consistent. So if it's colored in in your chart, you have that energy in a fixed and consistent way. But we all have it. Some of us have it variable. Some of us have it consistently. But we all have it. So there isn't It's not possible for any of you to not be able to receive, to be supported, to have faith. You all are designed to have faith. You all are designed to be supported. You all are designed to experience grace in all of its different forms. So please, please, please file that away and don't panic. If I show something in the chart that you think you don't have, you have it. You just might not have it colored in, which means you have variability. Remember that variability is the path to wisdom. That when you have something in your chart that's white and open, it means you have the potential for a deeper, richer understanding because you have that variety of experiences in the openness. Okay? All right. Lecture over. <laughs> the very first thing that I want you to understand when we are looking at keeping it simple, which is the goal here, I think that you can have a lot of faith and you don't have to sit in a, a cave in a loincloth and meditate for 20 years to get a lot of faith. And to me, this is really the beauty of human design because it gives us this very simple gift. Your strategy by human design type is the way in which you interface with the cosmic plan. And it is the way in which you decide based on what shows up in your reality, what you're going to do and what's available to you. None of us is designed to choose things we hate. We are all designed through strategy to follow the things that feel good and right. And our strategy is the interface, the way in which we engage with that goodness and that rightness. So if you are struggling with faith and you are using your head and you're way lost in doubt and suspicion, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute, and you think that it's okay to have faith until Thursday, But if by Thursday, whatever it is you're trying to create hasn't shown up and you don't have the answer to what you're looking for by the end of the week, then forget faith or divine plan. Thank you very much. You're just going to take action with your own will. It's your backup plan for the divine. If you're operating on a contingency plan with faith, if you're operating on a contingency plan with the way in which you create in the world, I want to invite you to practice following your human design strategy by type. We don't talk a lot about this on the Quantum Alignment Show lately. Lately, we've been talking about big, lofty ideas, and we haven't been covering the really important, super simple basics. Your energy system by type has a specific way in which it is designed to interface with the earthly plane. Your earthly plane is bringing to you the things that you either want or evidence of things you don't want so that you can push against them and create something different. Your strategy, if you just simply said, I'm not going to try to figure this out at all. I'm not going to meditate. I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to use essential oils. I'm not going to use flower essences. I'm not going to use crystals. I'm just going to go about my life, but I am going to do one thing, and that is I'm going to follow my strategy by type. So for manifestors, that's informing. For generator types, that's responding. 
for projectors, it's waiting for the invitation. For reflectors, it's going through the 28-day lunar cycle of waiting. If you follow your strategy, you are naturally interfacing with the plan for your life, with the cosmic plan for your life, the divine plan with your, for your life, the story of who you are, and the soul curriculum that you set up when you manifested it into this incarnation. Strategy is the interface. And if you simply decided, okay, I'm just going to follow strategy, and you didn't learn anything else about your chart, you learn anything about your gates or your channels or your centers or your profile or your bases or your tones or your colors or your whatever, if you just simply allowed yourself to live by a strategy, you would be interfacing in the most perfect way with the cosmic plan, and it would be pretty simple and pretty easy. The thing is, you'd have to trust that process. And the only way to trust that process is to experiment with it, which I'll talk about in just a minute. I mean, you got to give yourself permission to dive in and dive in wholeheartedly. The next thing we want to look at is the chart. This is the part that I was saying, don't panic if this isn't in your chart. We're looking at the chart as a blueprint or a template for what's possible. Let's look at the chart and let's look at where in the chart are we designed to be supported. Now, when we talk about support, oftentimes in the human journey, when we talk about support, we're also talking about the M word. We tend to equate support with money. So if you want to turn this into where's money in the chart, you can do that too. This goes a little bit beyond that, but let's look at where does support show up in the chart. The first place that that, uh, support shows up in the chart or faith, actually, this is where faith lives in the chart in the gate 55. The gate 55 in human design is actually called the gate of abundance in spirit. It's an emotional energy and it's a profoundly creative energy. And actually it's a really, really important energy when we look at the big picture of the human story. Human design is undergoing, your human design, all of our human designs, the human experience is undergoing a pretty interesting and powerful mutation. Our entire energy field is actually slated for an upgrade. I'll call it human 2.0 in 2027. In this upgrade, the nature of how the energy flows in the chart is changing. We've already gone through an upgrade before, just informing you this isn't a new event. We've actually been building towards this event for hundreds of years. We went through the first phase of this evolution in the late 1700s when the heart chakra actually split into the G and the will. And the solar plexus chakra split into the sacral, I'm sorry, into the spleen and the emotional solar plexus. Let me say that again. The solar plexus chakra split into the emotional solar plexus and the spleen. That split going from seven centers to nine centers set us up for this next phase in the human evolution. If you've ever heard of a phrase called the shift, or if if you've heard people talk about we're in the shift. Part of what's going on with the shift is we are mechanically literally changing the nature of how we operate. We are becoming more spiritual beings that are having a physical 3D experience. If you think you're a spiritual being having a 3D experience now, hang on, it's going to get better. And part of what's going to happen is in the new experience of our human journey, and by the way, it's not like you're going to wake up one morning and boom, you're going to be a different kind of a human. It's a gradual transition and we're already knee deep in it. In this new transition, in this new expression of the human journey, the 55, the gate 55, is actually the driving energy of the entire system. The entire chart is driven by this gate 55. The gate 55 operates this way. It says, basically, when I am emotionally in alignment with my abundance, then I will receive in my life to the degree to which my vibrational alignment reflects that state of faith and trust. In other words, if you trust and know that you are fully supported and you act that way and you feel that way, then you will create in your reality experiences that mirror that feeling level of creativity. Your emotional alignment with your abundance is vital, and it is the place where faith lives. Faith is emotional, and it's feeling as if you are abundant, and then acting as if you are abundant. I am 
right now having such a great time reading a book and I encourage you all to read this. It's a pretty simple read. Um, it's called The Metaphysics of Buckminster Fuller. And uh, in this book, it's a, it's a little bit of a, of a biography of Buckminster Fuller's spiritual beliefs. And one of the things I think is so fascinating is Buckminster Fuller had probably, I think in all of the human beings I've read about and studied, some of the most unshakable faith of any person I've ever read about. He never doubted his support. Now, this comes, by the way, he, he did have a cataclysmic spiritual awakening that happened to him when he was on the verge of committing suicide. So he did have a pretty cataclysmic, intense, you know, dark cycle in his life that caused him to have a waking up call, so to speak. He was actually spoken to by a voice um, and actually literally taken out of his body uh, while he was contemplating killing himself and given information about his life. And one of the things that he was able to connect with once he returned to his body and saw that his life had more meaning and purpose than he realized was that he was fully supported in the manifestation of his purpose. And that as long as he stayed true to his purpose and his alignment with spirit, source, God, whatever you want to call it, as his source, meaning when he knew that he didn't have to figure stuff out, he didn't have to worry about how the bill was going to get paid. He just knew that it would get paid so that he could continue to create what he came here to create. When he could create from that place or stay in that emotional alignment, then he got everything he needed. He acted accordingly. He would pay his bills as soon as they came in. Even if he thought he didn't have the money, he paid all of his bills. And, and actually, it turned out for him that as soon as he did that, the money would always show up because he had that degree of faith that he could create from that deep well of spiritual abundance. The 55 teaches us that when we trust and have faith, when we believe that we will be fully supported, we will have everything we need. This, as I said, is the driving energy that we're moving towards as we evolve. And we are by nature as evolving beings experiencing lessons and learning how to work with this, this energy. So if you feel like, oh, I'm failing this right now, or, oh, this is so hard in my head, I can think about it. Or in my, you know, in my mind, I can imagine it. And sometimes we can't even do that. And that's okay. That's still step one where we're learning where we need to work, right? That when we understand that we are being trained right now by our human journey, by the planets, by the transits, how to deepen and cultivate our faith, then you can understand that you're going through a school right now. You're in faith school right now. We're all in faith school right now. And when we learn to trust in our support and when we learn that creation happens not from sheer effort, but from emotional alignment with abundance, then things are going to start to get a lot easier, I believe, on the planet. And we're already doing it. You're all already doing a pretty good job of it. Think about the movie The Secret. I think it came out in 2005. And for some of you, I don't know how old you guys are. I know I used to get Abraham Hicks cassettes. We talk, I talked about that last time and people were telling me all the other teachers they used to get on cassettes too. Remember cassettes, right? We have already been learning about this very deliberately and very consciously from since 2005, many of us. And honestly, we've been learning about this for the last hundred years since the emergence in the 1920s of the understanding or the label of quantum physics as being a differentiated aspect of physics with that evolution in consciousness in the 1920s that heralded quantum physics into the scientific realm. We also brought with it quantum consciousness and quantum consciousness is all about creating from the unseen by believing in the unseen enough to make it manifest. That's the nature of what this energy is about. Having the emotional excitement and joyful anticipation that what you're dreaming of will come to be, even if you can't see it yet. The next place where we have support in the chart is in the channel 14.2. This is the only place in the chart where we work for support. The sacral center, which is the square at the bottom of this channel, is the center for workforce and life force energy. Generator types will have that colored in. Manifestors, projectors, and reflectors will have that white or open. When you respond, this is the key here. This isn't get an idea, go out and make it happen. That doesn't actually exist anywhere in the chart. There's not a single place in the chart 
where we are designed to get an idea and go out and force it into being. When we are quote unquote working to make money, we are working to make money in response, meaning we hold a frequency of energy, of expectation of support, an expectation of abundance and sufficiency. And from that frequency of energy, our outer reality then brings to us something to respond to that then gives us work that procures an income. So this isn't about will. This isn't about pushing an effort. This is about doing work in response. And when you understand that work in response is work that feels good and right, it's not torture, it's not horrible, it's not terrible, it's work that feels good and right. That when we do work that feels good and right, we create support. Now, if you break this channel down, the 14, which is the one that's connected to the sacral, the square, is actually responding to the work and doing the work. The two, which is the bottom of the G center, the two is a yin-yin hexagram. It is the most yin or the most receptive of the hexagrams. In fact, in the traditional I Ching, it's called the receptive, okay? We are designed to receive by virtue of who we are. It's connected to the G center. You are designed to receive yin yin. Everything you need to fulfill who you are and the work that you do in response to what the universe brings you will help you create that support. And of course, you all know that not all of you have all of this channel defined. Some of you will have one gate. Some of you will have the other gate. Some of you will have none of it. And basically, the bottom line is this. In multiple different unlimited ways, you are all designed to be supported in fulfilling who you are. Okay? Fulfilling who you are. The next thing is the 4521. This is called the money line. The will center, which is the little triangle on the bottom of this channel, is all about bringing things forth on the material plane. It's the center for value. The will center is about your self-worth and creating in the material world the reflection of your value. So when you are living in alignment with your value, you are designed to, by virtue of holding the energy of your value, to receive all the support that you need or all the support that is a reflection of your value. Now, will center energy is also designed for sustainability, meaning we are designed to be supported in a sustainable way. One of my favorite stories that comes from Old Testament is the story of manna. And uh, just in the story of manna, we learn that when the Israelites fled slavedom, uh, and being slaves in Egypt, they crossed the the Red Sea, Red Sea, <laughs> and they merged into the desert. And when they got there, you know, because they had fled, they didn't really have very much food. They didn't have any water. They didn't have much. And they'd been slaves for a long, long time. So they didn't really remember the power of who they are. And God appears to the people and God says, don't worry. Okay. Important words, first of all, right? Don't worry. I got this covered. Every day I'm going to give you this substance called manna. Manna is perfect. It will sustain you physiologically in every way. It has perfect nutritional value. It's gluten-free. It's vegan. right? It's perfect nutritional value for you. Every day you will receive just enough. You will have enough to get through the day. All you have to do is go out and gather it and then eat it, enjoy it, okay? That's the responding piece, right? The outer reality brings it to you. You respond to it, you gather it, you eat it, you enjoy it. If you take more than you need, the extra that you gather will rot. It won't make it to the next day. So don't worry about the next day. Just worry about this day, okay? And if your neighbor can't gather for some reason, because maybe they're sick or they just had a baby or something happened, you may gather for your neighbor and give the manna that your neighbor needs to them each day. And on the sixth day of every week, I will give you double portions so that on the seventh day, you don't have to gather manna, you can rest. 
in that story is contained, first of all, that entire story is contained in the human design chart. And that's, that's a whole nother class, but I can show you the whole flow of energy of that. In that story is the entire journey of abundance or sufficiency in the chart. We are designed through the will center, which works to rest. The will center needs consistent cycles of rest. It needs a day off. And that day off is not a day where you lay on the couch freaking out about money and being worried. Okay, don't worry. It's a day where you restock your inner supplies. You resource yourself. You connect with source. You take care of yourself. You nurture yourself. You allow yourself to recognize that you are precious enough to rest so that you can continue to contribute who you are to the world in a rest-filled, restored, renourished, replenished way. This channel is the channel that we use to disseminate those resources that we carry in a sustainable way and we share with others. And we receive, as I said, in accordance with the quantity of value that we hold for ourselves. So when we look at what's necessary for us to be supported and to feel supported and to receive support, what we know is that our sense of value, our own sense of value, meaning your ability to understand your unique and irreplaceable role in the cosmic plan and your understanding that because you are a once in a lifetime cosmic event and you play an irreplaceable role in the cosmic plan and the evolution of humanity, because you are so precious, you are worthy of taking the time off to rest and restore and replenish your resources. And in fact, I would even challenge you a little bit that if you are struggling with finances or money or support or whatever definition support takes in your life, that oftentimes resting is the most important thing you can do to begin the flow of money again. I find that a lot of times with my clients, when I find that people hit what I call a creative dead space, when it feels like you're stuck and nothing's manifesting, nine times out of 10, nothing's manifesting because you're exhausted and you're burned out. And the universe knows that you don't have anything to give and you don't have any energy to create. So the universe sends you what I like to call loving dead space. And we fight it and we resist it because we panic and we think, oh my God, nothing's going to happen. I'm stuck in this dead space. But that dead space is an opportunity for you to rest, an opportunity for you to get into your hammock and to contemplate the nature of your support and to contemplate the value of who you are and how worthy you are of receiving the support that you are destined to receive by virtue of your existence. You are valuable because you exist and because you are valuable You are worthy of support because you exist. Last but not least, this is my very favorite hexagram. I I joke, I love this hexagram so much. I have it tattooed. You can't see it. Hold on. I have it tattooed on my arm. This is the gate 22. Gate 22 is grace. And it is the continuing energy from the 55. So if you follow the flow of energy from the root to the emotional solar plexus to the throat center, you would see the flow of abundance really in the chart goes from the 39, 55, 22, 12. The 22 is the energy that follows abundance and it's grace. The 22 says that when you fulfill your purpose, when you wake up every morning with the intention of using your life to be in service to the divine or in service to the cosmic plan, that when you hold that energy and that intention, You will be provided for every need you have to do what you came here to do to make the world a better place. That is a place of surrender in the chart. In human design, what we see is that the source of power is to actually surrender. And I will go back and revisit some of that. And the 22 is definitely one of those places where we surrender. We let go and we trust. And when we let go and trust, when that's that's in the nature of the definition of the human journey is part of Your goal is the full expression of the human being that you are. You are designed to let go and trust and to serve your unique and irreplaceable place in the cosmic plan. And when you do that, then you will receive everything you need to fulfill your purpose. It's that pay your bills with the trust that you will be supported when you stay in fulfillment of your purpose. The biggest obstacles that we have to cultivating faith faith, (laughs) is the misuse of logic. 
There is a circuit in the human design system called the logical circuit. It is one third of the ways in which we know. There are three different ways of knowing in human design. There's logic, which is all about understanding patterns. There's sensing, which is all about sensing, feeling, and um, well, sensing and feeling truth. And then there's knowingness from the knowing circuit, which is all about knowing what's true, not necessarily knowing how you know what you know, but knowing what's true. Our culture is heavily biased towards knowing, using logic as the only way of discerning what's true and what's not. Logical energy in the chart is about understanding patterns. It's about proposing a hypothesis. This is where the scientific method lives in the chart. Proposing a hypothesis, exploring the hypothesis, experimenting with the hypothesis, evaluating the patterns derived from the hypothesis, and using patterns to verify and validate whether a thought or an opinion is actually indeed valid. So much of our lives are set up based on this logical system. Anything that has the word system associated with it is logical, including, by the way, human design. So we have an education system. We have a welfare system. We have healthcare systems. Systems imply formulas. Logical circuitry as is formulaic in nature. It's all about predicting patterns based on what's happened before so that you can predict the future. So you're looking at the past. If you think about science, science is about interpreting past events in a pattern way so that you can predict the future. Because we are so heavily conditioned towards logic, we are trained in logic, we are educated in logic, we are taught that something's not true unless you can logically verify and validate that it's true. And that leaves us oftentimes questioning our own intuition, our own knowingness, our own sensual experience of the world, our own sensual understanding of truth. Because logic is by nature doubtful and suspicious, we tend to doubt faith. We tend to think that in order for us to create, we have to see it to believe it. And if you have a lot of logic defined in your chart, you may have an extra little adventure with trying to overcome doubt and suspicion when it comes to cultivating faith. Faith is about seeing it in your mind's eye and believing in it before it appears. Faith is to a certain degree illogical. Let's talk about those some logical ways that you can cultivate faith because you can hack the system a little bit. Remember that logic is all about patterns. So the first thing that I want you to do if you're going to cultivate faith in a logical way is you got to start looking and noticing patterns. Most importantly, I want you to start noticing patterns. This is your homework for the next couple of weeks. I want you to start noticing patterns that imply that miracles are more commonplace or more predictable or more regular than we anticipate. So I'm going to invite you to go on what I call a miracle hunt. Get a notebook, get a pen or a piece of paper and start keeping a journal or a log of all the unaccepted, unexpected logical, sorry, unexpected, miraculous events that you encounter in your life journey. You can look for it in the news. You can look for it in your own life. A couple of examples that I've had in the last couple of weeks, there's always one of these. Go look at people who find their lost wedding rings in fish's bellies. That is like a crazy pattern. So uh, one of my very favorite stories is, uh, it comes from Michigan. I found this in the newspaper a couple of years ago. There were these two young boy, young in their young 20s, young men, who had a friend who had just come home from uh, Afghanistan, I believe, and uh, had, uh, had died in Afghanistan, and they were burying their friend in Michigan. And uh, after the funeral, these two young men went to sit by, you know, a Lake Superior, I think, and they were sitting on the shore of the lake, and um, they noticed out in the distance, bobbing in the waves, was a bottle. And they were like, that's weird. And so they sat on the shore for a while. And eventually the waves brought this bottle to shore. And they went and they opened the bottle and they realized that in the bottle there was a note. So they unscrewed the lid, took the note out. And it was a note that had been written by their dead friend when he was 10 years old that he had put into a bottle and thrown out into the lake. So they actually have, if you go look, I don't know if you can find the story again. I'll see if I can find the story again. They actually gave the note to his mom who has it framed in her house because it was evidence to her that her son was still with her. That is a freaking weird story, right? But yet it happened. So I want you to start breaking the mindset about that you may have cultivated about the impossible. 
And I want you to start noticing how possible the impossible seems. So go on a miracle hunt. Start keeping a log, not only in your own life, but start keeping a log of everything you see in the news, every story you hear from your friends. Ask your friends what's the greatest miracle you've ever experienced. Go on a miracle hunt and start keeping a log of your miracles. The reason why I want you to keep a log or a journal, and I don't want you just to keep a log or a journal of your miracles. I want you to also keep a log of how many things manifest in your life. How many thoughts do you have that then show up in your outer reality? And good or bad things. Sometimes it's the bad things, right? We have a thought, negative thought, and then we create something with that too. I want you to start keeping a log of how many times your thoughts or your heart is creating your reality so that you can start to see that there's a pattern there. Because when you can understand, oh, when I carry this frequency of energy, I consistently create these qualities of experiences and these experiences are magical and serendipitous and synchronous. You can start to see that the more that's and the more flow you have, the more consistency you have with that pattern, you can start to see that it's logical to trust in miracles. It becomes logical to trust in the unexpected. You want to create a pattern of support or a pattern in your mind where support is expected and predictable. And then I want you to also practice gratitude, which is the most logic busting energy we can have. And I know I have a lot of logic in my chart, a lot of logic in my chart. And gratitude is something I resist pretty heavily, believe it or not. I'm like, oh, that's just so, you know, fluffy, woo woo. Gratitude is noticing and it's noticing with heart. First of all, gratitude calibrates your heart center. It calibrates your monopole. It tells the world, hey, I want more of that, please. Gratitude also establishes attention towards good patterns that are working in your life. And it allows you to use those patterns, those logical patterns, to create more of the things that you're grateful for. So gratitude actually amps up your energy and it helps you notice patterns. And noticing with heart patterns, perspectives, is actually a big part of the creative force that you use when you're manifesting things in your life. Okay, so these are your, these are your steps. Look for and notice patterns, go on a miracle hunt, keep a journal or a log, create a pattern where support is expected and predictable, and use gratitude because it starts to create a logical pattern that stimulates you receiving even more.